It's just a day. It's just a day. You know, we can do it. It's just today. I think I think we can do it. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Think about that, a new year. Think about a calendar. Now think about another calendar. And that's where we are. You know what I'm saying? That that crispy little calendero is stretching its neck out again. It's January. I have a friend, he's Spanish, dude, or Mexican. And he he'll say, Oh, it's January. And I love that, man. I love that's one thing that I do enjoy about different languages is it's more you know, when you say something in a different language, it's like your tongue gets to do something special, you know? Like January, that shit sounds like any something, you know, somebody probably going to get, you know, shot. You know, the mail's going to be late. You know, somebody might get, you know, a rash or a little bit of, you know, maybe even a little bit of AIDS up around their neck or something, you know, by, you know, skin AIDS or whatever, um, measles. But you say, oh, it's January. Bruh. Anything could happen in January. January? You might have a party. You know what I'm saying? You might just you might find gold. You ever found gold? Yeah. Well, you you know, this could be that time. So happy January. Happy New Year's. You feel me? No fears, baby. It's that cat daddy. I'm back. Come on. I'm that dreadlock flamingo. You got it? You know what I'm saying? I'm that Rasta, that yard bird. You see me over in the distance standing up on one leg with that pink body coat. Huffing on that giant. Huffing on that giant. You know what's up, baby? It's that nutmeg donkey coming at you 2019 uh, we can do it, and we can start right now. I'm just sitting on your front porch, wondering how could I be so far from my home. And my mind is somewhere else, but when I find it, I'll patch up where it's been thrown. Happy New Year's, guys and girls. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be oh, yeah. the cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it. In my bones. But it's gonna take. It's gonna take. A little time. The work school. For me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me. been floating on the breeze happy new year and this is it and it is a special time you know it's funny a new year it's that you know it's i mean i'll be honest it's the same year as before but it's just really a chance to kind of restart reconnect i feel you know you can evaluate Look at your body. That's one thing I do. You know, I'll do this. A lot of guys don't like to do this. You know, a lot of guys don't like to look at their body as we get older. You know, women women will speak often about their body and this and that. And, you know, something's happening and they got this or whatever. But men, a lot of times, we have body problem. 
you know, your body starts to look, you know, special. You know, I was at a Christmas meal and somebody, I don't think it was a family member, but somebody that was, you know, kind of fucking somebody that was in our family. So it was like a lover, you know, or something was at the house. And this fella had a big mole back behind his, right in that little soft spot behind, you know, on the back of your knee, behind your knee, whatever that little, it's like a little joint where you, if you know, behind your knee, the other side of your knee, whatever that's called, that little, it's almost like where if your knee had like a little butthole, kind of that's where it would be, you know, or a b-hole, I'm sorry. I don't want to say, you know, say, well, I got to say it again just to tell you what I said, but I don't want to say butthole again this early in the new year. But yeah, if your, if your knee had a little b-hole, it would be in that soft spot on the back side of your, of your knee, on the back of your leg. And this gentleman had a damn mole back there, looked like a damn, I mean, just like a damn chocolate elevator button. You know, like if you was at the chocolate factory and you wanted to go all the way to the top, you would press this big brown hitter. So all the kids at the house kept kind of running up and pressing on old boys, you know, hitting them on that little, I mean, it was big too. It looked like a damn second base. You know, if you ever played baseball or something, if you ever play baseball, sometimes you will be running around the bases and the bases are things out of the ground. And those are bases and they're white. But this fellow looked like he had a damn second base back there made out of just mole and just, you know, little chunks of, uh, you know, body cancer. But all the kids kept run, com coming up and just ringing that bitch like a doorbell, you know. So this is the time of year where as men, we have to do something for ourselves. We have to evaluate. You got to look at yourself. Get that gander. You know, get a mirror. If you don't have a mirror, you know, get you some strong tin foil. You know, or some aluminum foil that has a real, you know, kind of a robust attitude. And put that shit out. And get a look at yourself. Take stock. Take inventory. Look at your body. Where you got some new hair at? My buddy didn't realize he had damn... um. He had like six inches of hair on his tri on the back side of his triceps. He didn't see it because he hadn't taken a little bit of um, that body inventory and get that gander at yourself. And, you know, next thing you know, he could cornrow his fucking triceps, dude. You know, and that's really a beautiful art. If you haven't seen some of that, that's real Native American or kind of something maybe like, you know, kind of young, you know, kind of inner city girls will do before they jump rope. You know, braid, you'll do braiding. But it's a time where you look at your body. You know, get over by the mirror, bend over. Check your body, check your butt, you know. Look at the back of your nuts, see who's back there, what's going on. If you, do you have a tattoo back there and behind your nuts or something? Do you remember getting that? Do you have a rash? You know, I knew a gal one time and, uh, she showed everybody that, you know, that little baby badger hole at our party. And she didn't realize she had a bunch of big mumps or something back there. Or some, you know, big damn, you know, some, some real booty mumps or something back there. Back there by that little booty hole. B-hole, sorry. Damn, I keep saying it. And I don't want to say it and I'm sorry that I said it already a couple times. But yeah, you got to be careful. You got to know what's going on, man. And it's special, especially for us. You got to check your nuts. Check your nuts. And they say you can't feel your body at work. I'm not touching myself, sir. Okay? I'm checking my body for cancer. So if your boss comes up, you know, my boss, one time I was, well, this actually I was, you know, I was actually, I was, you know, you know, kind of enjoying my body. One time I worked at a, what was that place called? Chef's Chef's Voyage or something. Chef's Voyage. And it was a real shithole. And I was, um, well, it was nice. They had real nice silverware. I mean, the kind of silverware you looked at it and you were like, damn, did this, you know, am I on the Titanic? But you were just in a shopping mall. You were over there by a Payless Shoes, really. 
So if you looked out the window, you would know you weren't on the Titanic. But if the windows were closed and you were just staring at the silverware, you could maybe have the idea you were boating. But anyway, I worked up there and my buddy worked up there and he was homoerotic. You know, he preferred the company of men and, and men's bodies. But anyway, he was about 40 or something and he was a, you know, he was also a real, he was a boxer. He was like a real, you know, kind of this little Italian. He looked kind of, you know, he looked like a little, he looked like a kind of a senior citizen, but also like a child at the same time. He was that kind of mixed Italian daddy, you know, that mozzarella madman. And his name was Billy Conforto, rest in peace, because he ate a bunch of pills years later and he drove a car into an um, embankment out there in Laplace, Louisiana. And he was, a, he was a good friend of mine. And we got stoned one time during when Princess Diana died. And I didn't know what Princess Diana was. You know, I thought it was, you know, a beanie baby or like a nice dessert. And we'd gone over to his house because he was my friend. You know, we were, we were actually really good friends. We were close friends and, and I miss him. And he, uh, and he would, he had made us a couple chicken cutlets, you know, grilled us up a couple of, you know, hearty chicken breasts. I mean, a real chicken, not one of these weak bitches that they're pumping all these vitamins and, and riboflavins into over there and, you know, out there in Laurel, Mississippi. But I'm talking about them real bad boys. I'm talking about the kind of chicken that gets up in the morning and does some, you know, does some lunges and does some, uh, you know, work, does, a, um, you know, maybe 40 pounds of incline press. I'm talking about that kind of chicken, that real, that fucking bad bitch that'll sing. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about a, maybe a black chicken, you know, kind of lady that'll be singing in the, you know, singing in a chorus in the yard while the other chicken's just doing some bullshit. I'm talking about a real bad bitch. And he had some of those cutlets, those high-end cutlets. And he grilled those hitters up when we had gotten stoned doing drugs, you know, doing uh, marijuana. And we got so stoned, man, and we, um, and that's when Princess Diana died. And he kept telling me, and I didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, dude. I thought he was talking about a damn beanie baby, and I was fucked up. But anyhow, he and I worked together at a place, and they caught me one time in the, in the freezer section. In the freezer, you know, they had bread pudding in the freezer, and I'd sneak back there and do a couple whippets and have me a couple of fucking quick handfuls of bread pudding. And if you've ever worked at a restaurant, you know what I'm talking about. It's called taking a break. And that was something we would do. And I'd get back there and hit them whippets, get me four fucking, you know, and get, get feeling all kind of creamy up in my skull. And then I'd fill my mouth with that just... God damn, I don't know if you've ever had a little bit of bread pudding and eaten it out of your own hand, but that is the damn Lord's tartare right there, boy. God dang. Some people, when they die, you know, they want to be em embalmed or they want to, you know, you know, they want their family to shoot them out of a cannon or something into a damn, you know, into a damn, you know, schoolyard or they want to be, you know, put in a, in one of them, what are those lava lamps? But this was, uh, what I'm talking about is when you die, fuck, what am I talking about? Oh, I'm talking about that bread pudding. I'm talking about this, the kind of shit. When I die, I want to be embalmed with that bread pudding and pour a little bit of that fucking raisin sauce on my body, that bourbon just that bourbon backwash, just dip daddy's ass in that bourbon backwash and you put me in a casket like that. You're going to see how many people come to my funeral. That's what I'm saying. This is a damn, this funeral is five star. This is a Michelin five star funeral, baby. And God damn, what's that boy on? Is he, was he, he smells good. He smells like he's got that rum raisin sauce on him. And that's how I want to die. I want to be embalmed with bread pudding like a real man. Like a real man. But Billy Conforto was one of the first real men that I ever met in my life. And he was, you know, he was good to me. He was protective of me. And he, you know, when other kids would do me wrong, he would fight them. 
And I guess in hindsight, it's a little weird to think a 35-year-old man was fighting children. But, you know, where I grew up, that was what it was what it was. You know what I'm saying? Age didn't really matter. You would just fight each other. You know, you see a six-year-old and a fucking 82-year-old out there just, you know, out there beating each other in the neck with, you know, kind of small pieces of wood, lean pieces of wood, swath, swaths. So, but man, he, you know, we were good buddies. And what happened was I worked over there at that restaurant and um, what am I talking about? I don't even know. Well, happy new year, guys. That's what I'm saying. And happy new year, girls. And we are, you know, we're, we just, we're just deciding who we are still. It's that year where you can kind of reimagine yourself a little. And I think it has to start in your imagination, in your brain, in that little thought aquarium that's, you know, catching that free ride on top of your neck. Because your neck, the only reason you have a neck is to fucking put your brain out up in the air a little bit. Otherwise, your brain would just be kind of right down between your shoulders. Think about that. All your neck is is like a little damn vase for your brain and eyes. So... But this is a time of year where we can, we, I think if, if you want to kind of re, not reinvent yourself, but you can reimagine yourself. It's like, you know, life is just still going forward, but suddenly somebody walks up with a piece of chalk and they just draw like a line in front of you. And sometimes a line is so powerful, you know, because it can be a starting point. It can be an ending point. You know, I'm drawing the line right here. This is the starting line right here. It can connect two things. I got to, how do I get from here to here? Oh, I know how. Whew, a line. You know, a line is such a simple thing and it, and it can be so powerful. So this is that time of year where you can set your line. You can set your line. What do you want to catch? What do you want to reel in? Do you want anything different? You just want to keep riding the same. You want to walk that tight rope. And a tightrope, that's just a line. It's time to just, you know, set your line. And we can do it. And that's one thing that's beautiful about this time of year. Is it's just a chance to kind of re... Just, you know, you, you could turn the gas off for a little bit and now you can restart it. Relight the pilot. You know, whatever happened, happened. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this line right here. And when I walk over the line, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try to have a new experience for myself. That's one thing I'm thinking about. Oh, dude, I had a good, we had New Year's Eve at the world famous comedy store on the Sunset Strip. And I got to be the headliner. And it's kind of crazy. Like last year I was the, I was just on the bill. I got to be on the show and David Spades was the headliner. And David Spades is like a, he's like a child actor, but he's now a man, but he still is really a child actor that plays the role of men. And he, um, and I just got to be on the bill and it was exciting and it was adventurous and it was, you know, a fun night. But this time, you know, I, I got to be the headliner. And dude, it was pretty cool to see, you know. People were excited and there was good energy. We put up a video on Patreon. If you're a Patreoner, you can check it out on there of the uh, some of the backstage and just the experience. And um, and it was fun, you know. And we did the we did the toast at midnight. And a lot of times the toast, somebody you know will fight. You know, you have Italian guy will like you know stab somebody in the neck with their wine glass. You know, you'll have you know. Maybe one of your Jewish buddies will leave early and kind of chirp out on a tab or whatever. You know, sometime a black owl completely, they'll all roll out and just, you know, no tab. And, um, and you know, it, things can happen around midnight. You know, maybe some white dude might sneak over with a long mustache and, see, and steal uh, somebody's, um, you know, steal a little tin of Altoids or something. You know, that's like a hipster crime, isn't it? Hipsters be doing shit like that. They're going to sneak over there and steal a little tin of Altoids or something. Fucking wildcats. A hipster's crazy, man. 
a hipster while you're sleeping, they'll come over and gel down your body hair and steal your wallet. Like, what the fuck, man? They're wild like that. They'll come over and smell your breath and try to uh, try to tell your future. Like, what? Dude, I've had, you know, just I had a couple mozzarella sticks. Don't be, you know, predicting a bunch of wild shit. But that's how they are sometimes, different people at midnight. Some people turn into a fucking wolf. If you have a friend that turn, you know, he's kind of haired up or something, some fucking Persian bad boy, he might turn into a fucking wolf and jump out the window, you know, and buy a Mercedes. So you just, you know, different people behave differently at midnight. But the, everybody just was really calm. We had a nice cheers. We casually brought in the new year. And then we got right back into the show. So I'm grateful to everybody that came out. Uh, I really am, man. It was fun. A lot of nice people I met after the show. Some people had driven in from different places. Um, I met a pair of brothers that had flown in from Wyoming. And man, it just really lifted up my spirits, you know. Uh, you know, and sometimes I feel bad in my life that I, you know, that I haven't really gone out of my way that much at some moments. But that meant a lot that, you know, these boys flew in from Wyoming. Actually, they weren't brothers. They were damn cousins. And I told them they were brothers. I said, you guys need to, you know, spit into a cup and mail it in or, you know, jerk off onto a Dalmatian and see what it, you know, see if it knows anything. But you guys might be damn brothers because they look like fucking brothers, man. But just good people. A lot of good people came out and I'm super grateful uh, for everybody that came out. And, and I sold out two shows or we sold out two shows on New Year's Eve at the world famous comedy store on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. And if you'd have told the kid, you know, that was walking down McGee Street over there in Covington, Louisiana, you know, uh, just with, you know, just fury in his, in his brain. And if you'd have told that boy and just uncertainty and, you know, probably feeling less than, but feeling, you know, like there could be some potential and energy in the world and excitement and hope and just all those young, that chasm of just that Roy G. Biv of fucking feelings that a young boy has. If you'd have told that kid, man, you were going to get to live out an, uh, uh, at least some moments that will make you feel, um, that will make you feel okay, that will make you, that you will find some joy in, or you'll get to live out a dream, even if it's just for a moment. Man, it's, it was really, really nice, man. It was a lot of fun. So thank you to everybody that came out to that. Oh, I got to tell you this. So I went to a, a hair show. They got a hair company. And a hair company, they sell, a hair company, they sell not, uh, not knives, scissors, and they're called Hanzo. And the man told me, they said, have you heard of Hanzo? And I was like, Hanzo? I was like, is that, I think that's where when you're driving, you take both your hands off the wheel and somebody in the passenger seat, hopefully a hitchhiker, you know, sprays you out a little, you know, gets you to kind of coom a little with their hand. And that's, or that's what it used to mean. And he said, nah, nah, man, it's different now. It's, um, it's a scissor company, and they make strong scissors, you know, hair knives. Because hair knives, a long time ago, if you were in a special country or in a foreign land, somebody come up real quick, you give them a dollar, they'll fucking just saw, you know, they saw you up. They ginsu, they, you know, and next thing you know, you walk out of there, you know, keyed up, looking like a damn uh, cockatiel. Like a couple raccoons might try to fuck you because you got that beautiful, that suave hitter on top of your head. That follicle fiance, you know? That follicle fianciness, bruh. And that's 100% fiance. Damn. He looking snazzy. That boy is fiance. And, uh, and that's what this company, they make spicy scissors. They make the kind of scissors, man, you cut your hair and next thing you know, you're fucking, you know, you with the Lord and you feeling right in your heart. Like, damn, they just, and you know, I, and I didn't know a lot about hairstyling. You know, I cut my own hair tall is probably maybe 32. And then now I see a man about it. 
And I go to a basic, man, a barber shop. My guy's a bicyclist. He does bicycling on the weekends to, um, you know, to get away from his family because he's like that. You know, he's a parent. But, man, I walked in this place, dude. I'll say this. Hairstylists and people in the hair game, they're wild, bro. These people had so much, like, the craziest swag I've ever seen. You know, just all, like, you'd see a dude, they would all, all they were all meticulously quaffed and styled. You see a dude, he had a beard, bro, but inside, he had a little bird living in the beard, like, right in the front. Another dude, he his beard had two little doors on it. You open them up, and then a little thing would come out and tell you it was lunchtime. You know, a little, you know, alarm bird or something. Like, all kind of wild shit. They had a dude wearing an urn around his neck. He had his cousin around his neck. Like, what the fuck, bro? You could have left little Jeremy at home, you know? But people were swagged out. You had a dude, he had his sideburn, right? He'd grown it. All, it, it went down his neck and connected. He had that cheer, that cheered, you know, where your chest and your beard hair just goes, it's, there ain't no stopping us. And that shit just connects. And it was a full line all the way down to his pubis or pubis, you know, all the way down to his kind of pubic area. And it was just a full, like a sideburn. And then it went all the way down to that side yearn, baby. And that thing starts to yearn for that. That sea rot, you know, down there. So it was, people was just, you know, they had one dude, he had a cousin, his, his little cousin, he had him wrapped around his neck like a scarf. He had a real flexible cousin. You know, the boy did yoga and all of that. He was wearing him like a damn shawl around his head. And I had to perform at this place. And I'm like, well, what the, f what, what am I going to do? These people are fired up. You know, these people are fucking selling scissors, man. And they're keyed up. And they, they all got all kind of swag. Some, you know, somebody was drinking, uh, they was doing all kind of stuff. You know, somebody had a little, um, you know, uh, had a little, uh, like a dozen eggs around her neck on a p little piece of rope. Like, what the fuck is that, man? What is that? But people were swagged up. But, you know, people had a tattoos of all kind of stuff. People had a bunch of, you know, trail of tears going up and down their arm. And some dude had a lightning bolt. You know, coming right out of his eye socket. Some dude had a toaster oven plugged into his back. It was like a tattoo. Like, what the fuck, you know? People keyed up. People thinking about breakfast. And I had to perform at this place. And it was, it was next level, man. And I thought I had some swag, but I had nothing compared to these Hanzos. The Hanzo people that sell um, hair knives, you know it. Scissors. And I was like, I've, you know, I've done a little scrapbook and you know that, but nothing like this, man. Nothing like this. Um, what else? What was I think? Oh, dude, I was thinking about this. Bro, maps aren't that great anymore. Go look at a map, dude. Look what's on it. Mountains. Mountains. Um, what is like a wet, um, slippery kind of, uh, river. All kind of stuff on it. But not the shit we need, man. I need a real map. I need to know where the uh, cocaine is at. Okay? Can we get that on the map? Okay? Um, What's the map company? Merriam Webb? Um, Merriam? Webster? Whatever it is. So, um, get, but we need a map with real shit. Where's the fucking quicksand? Y'all putting plateaus on the map. I don't give a fuck about a plateau. I want to know where are all these bitches that's just going to be trying to get at you for your money. Where is that area? Where is the uh, people that think they're better than everybody else? Can we outline those areas around the edges of the country? Like I want a real map. Like, where, you, where are you most likely to see twins? Wouldn't that be helpful? Because if you're riding across the country in a car or van or something, you know, or even hang gliding or something really far, you want to be able to know where you might be able to, you know, land and see some twins. Because that's the kind of shit that's helpful. 
but now they got all this shit. Here's a, ma- you know, here's a plateau. I don't give a dang. Here's a national forest. What about uh, <clears throat> where there's possible gold? How about that? Let's make a map that's actually helpful. What about where people have asthma? And what about where, you know, um, where people most likely to, you know, get bit by sharks or rabies? How about showing the damn rabies belt? How about putting stuff on a map that is helpful to people? Oh, here's a um tributary. I don't give a fuck. Where's Lil Terry? That's always slanging them eight balls. You feel me? Why ain't he on the map? And we need new maps, dude. And I'll say that right now. So, Mr. Trump, why don't you give us some new maps? But I wouldn't mind a map. Let me know where I could get the freshest milk. Because if you notice, a lot of the milk you get, especially if you get milk at a gas station, that shit is the, it is the Bruce Willis of Leche. You have, tw- that shit goes sour in eight hours. You have eight hours to drink any milk you get from a gas station. Go fall asleep. As soon as you wake up, that milk will be sour. You know, we need, we need to legalize decent gas station milk. But it's a new year. It's a new time. What am I doing this year that's going to be different? Still struggling to quit smoking. Oh, man, I'm tired of it. I might have to actually seek some kind of real help about it. Because I don't do it much, but I just can't stop. And I hate it. You know, I hate being a... I hate it. I just hate it. Um, What else? You know, I'm trying... You know, I'm, I'm almost... Let me see. I might be a month off of pornography. So that I'm feeling pretty good about. Not seeing that kind of visuals, you know? them body visuals and see people showing their booty and stuff like that. And it's time of year still, like I said, to get into checking out your own body and looking at yourself and knowing what's going on. Where do you have mucus? Where do you have mumps? Because you might have a booty mump or something on you and you want to get that bitch shaved down, you know, it's that time of year. Shave your booty down January. Um, I'll tell you this, I'm going to be in Irvine I'm going to be in Irvine. I'm going to be in Omaha at the Omaha Funny Bone. Those shows are sold out, and that's going to be this weekend. Then next weekend, I'm going to be in Irvine, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, Who else? We got some some cool cats will be in the crowd there. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, Addison Improv, that just sold out. That's at the end of January. And then Columbus, Houston. Boston, Atlantic City, San Jose, those are all um, coming up, and Phoenix, all through the end of March, and Kansas City in April. All those tickets are, uh, I believe, available at theovon.com slash tour, T-O-U-R. Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza, and Gray Block is that snazzy slice, and if you ever wanted to put a shape into your mouth that also has flavor, go to Gray Block. Because they got them triangular fiascos. And they'll put it right up in your face and make you feel fully Italian. Gray Block Pizza. Get that hitter. This past weekend is also brought to you by Skillshare. Man, I love this company. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. You'll discover countless ways to fuel your curiosity, creativity, and career. Take classes in social media marketing, mobile photography, creative writing, or even illustration. Whether you're looking to discover a new passion or start a side hustle or gain professional skills, Skillshare is there to help you keep learning and thriving. I want to thank everybody that has used Skillshare. So many of our listeners, I got it for some of my family members for Christmas. You can join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today. This past weekend, listeners get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering this past weekend listeners two months. That's two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash 
Theo Vaughn, T-H-E-O-V-O-N. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Theo Vaughn to start your two months now. If there's something you need to get into a new career, you don't have to go get these big degrees anymore. You just need to have the skill set. And you can get a skill set at Skillshare.com. And you might just find stuff that inspires you. You know, even if you just want to learn how to do social media better, that sort of thing, you can change it. You can change things fast. Um, <clears throat> man, I got that gristle in my throat a little, you know? You know, I was making a list the other day of um, of all the people that, I've, that have helped me in my life. You know, I was trying to, I'm trying to get more into gratitude this year. And I really want to, you know, I really want to be, I want to be of service in the world. You know, I want to be able to be of the best use of myself, you know. Um, I want to kind of re, kind of reignite that, the joy that, you know, is really can be, that, that really keeps us warm, that kind of operates inside of us. That doesn't matter if, you know, if work is going good or if, you know, we have somebody that loves us or if we have a new shirt or anything like that. I want to have that pilot light inside of me that really, that just has a confidence of comfort. And that's one thing I want to, you know, if if I had a New Year's resolution for myself, it's just to aim towards uh, finding things that make that brighter. And for me, usually that's... um, that's gratitude, finding things to be grateful for and people to be grateful for. And, uh, you know, I've been going through some stuff like, you know, I've been in like a, you know, a relationship for a while and really, you know, a really loving scenario. And, um, and it's hard, you know, and, and it's hard when that's not, you know, functioning the same way that it once was. And, uh, you know, it's hard to, and then also, you know, you want to, you know, you want to remain hopeful and you want to, you know, you want to, um, you want to, you want to, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you still, even sometimes when you're not with somebody, you still want to be able to love them. You know, and there's something really nice about being able to love somebody. You know, there's just something nice about being able to just care about someone. Not even, you know, yeah, there's nice things about, you know, relationships and, you you know, you get to do things together and this and that. But there's such a, man, it really, it really feels good to care about somebody. Uh, and this, And to watch someone else feel cared for. Man, that's such a beautiful thing that we can get so easily out of the world um, that we can do ourselves. You know, just when you love somebody and and get to do loving things for them and want to lift them up and make them, you know, you want to make them see themselves as beautifully and, 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 and perfectly as you see them. It's uh, the reward you get from that is really, that's one of the things that I want more of in, in my life is just those, those invisible, but just real gold rushes of joy that you can get from, from, um, you know, just caring about other people. You know, and I hope to find ways to infect that into more of myself this year. Uh, because, <clears throat> because I think as a, as a species, we're, you know, we're learning that a lot of this, uh, these, these things and this stuff and this, there's not that much value in it. There's not that much strength in it. And, uh, and that the connection with others and being vulnerable and willing you know, that's where a lot of joy is at. Or that's what I'm learning anyway. And I want to just be able to learn that even more. And I hope that, you know, my higher power kind of uh, can make that a part of my, uh, and I hope I can make myself willing to be a part of that this year and just, you know, try to f- try to surround myself with those types of things and those types of inspirations. 
because I notice the things that I spend my time doing are the things that I become and the feelings that I become. And, uh, and so I just, you know, that's one thing I want to try and do this year, just trying to spend my time doing more stuff that is in the, uh, in the realm of, of joy and, uh, onwardness. Man, we got some good calls that hit the hotline. And if you hear me sipping right now, I'm going to sip on something. Mmm. And I'll tell you what that is, man. That's that Four Sigmatic. And for, look, everybody been doing coffee for a long time. And the world's changing. Years ago, people didn't, you know, they didn't even have, uh, they didn't have whipped cream. Somebody would just put a bunch of, you know, throw some milk on top of something. People are like, well, what the fuck is that guy doing? But now things have changed and people have new things. And before people were drinking coffee, you know, you'd have somebody, you have nine cups of coffee and try to, you know, pick a lock with his tongue, you know, and let a bunch of Rottweilers out into a dang schoolyard. But that's changed. And one new product that's out there is called Four, F-O-U-R, Sigmatic. And if you're one of the 64% of Americans that drink coffee daily, you might want to listen to this. Four Sigmatic. These guys have been making drinking mushrooms a thing since 2012. That's right, drinking mushrooms. Four Sigmatic sells mushroom coffee that actually tastes great and it's good for you. So you get the same lift, you get the same gift that's in a regular coffee, but you don't get them jitters. You don't get them caffeine, kick, 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 kick. You know, next thing you over there, you know, undoing the ruffles on somebody's skirt with your, you know, with your elbows or something. Next thing you know, you, you so keyed up, you licking your own mustache off your body. But you don't get that with Four Sigmatic. Mushroom coffee has half the caffeine of regular coffee and it's truly magical. And it doesn't taste like mushrooms. Don't get that idea. It just tastes like a tea or a coffee. While these shrooms, they won't make you high. They will make you think. Mushroom coffee is way easier on your gut and it doesn't leave you with them dim, 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 dim jitters. Mushroom coffee has two rock star shrooms in it, Lion's Mane and Chaga. Lion's Mane is my favorite functional mushroom. I just can't get enough of it. It's your brain's best friend. Imagine if your brain had a little sidekick, a little side piece, you know, a little Fauntleroy running around with it. That is Lion's Mane. And that Chaga... Uh, and Chaga, that's not a racial slur or anything like that. It's a winter necessity. It helps support your immune system. And who has time to get sick these days? I don't. I don't want that. I want to be working. I want to be moving forward. Well, mushroom coffee comes in easy to use and easy to carry single serving packets. This one right here, that lion's mane. You can see this on the YouTube. And that's that mushroom elixir from Four Sigmatic. I got a special offer for our listeners. You receive 15% off. 15% off your Four Sigmatic purchase. Go to 4, F-O-U-R, Sigmatic, S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com slash weekend or use the discount code weekend at checkout. That's 4sigmatic.com slash weekend or use promo code weekend for 15% off. And it is good stuff, man. It's tasty. It makes you feel like a part of something new. And I like that Lions, man, and I like that Chaga. Let's get into a couple calls that came in. I want to thank you guys, as always, for hitting the hotline. It's 985-664-9503. I want to thank everybody that was a sponsor last year. We had so many good sponsors. Uh, Hood Hat, Bixby Coffee. Um, we had uh, Yaya's Crepes down there in Louisiana. We had a lot of small businesses that really helped us get vibing. All right, so today's episode, I wanted to focus on just thinking about, you know, fellas and us moving forward, you know, because a lot of men right now, it's a really tough time out there, and it's tough for women, too. I know that, but, you know, uh, well, I guess, look, I don't know if it's tough for people. I guess I just know that sometimes it's tough for me. You know, it's tough to know uh, we're in a different time. We're in a transition period in the world in some ways, and we're just evaluating a lot of what's going on. You know, there's a lot of evaluation going on at the U.S. border. There's a lot of uh, people chiming in about how they feel and different people and this is and this point of view and this point of view. And there's a lot of point of views out there. So, 
you know, what I'm learning for myself is I got to tend the sheep that I can touch. And that is obviously a term from probably Indiana or Alabama. But you got to tend to the sheep that you can touch. And, um, and we just have to, you know, as men, sometimes we have to share our experiences so that we can learn from one another and make good choices as we move forward uh, in all aspects of our life. And some of, some of those choices we learn from ladies, some of them we learn from each other. Um, and a lot of them, you know, uh, you know, we just have to be able to continue to communicate with one another, I think. Let's take a call that came in right here. Here we go. Hey, gang, gang, man. How you doing? Gang, gang, brother. Onward. Listen, I want to share about this uh, thing that I have. I get I lose interest in the girl on the next day. I mean, on the next day when we arrange a date, and we're like arrange it for the day after. And when the day comes, that morning, I don't feel like going there. You know what I mean? But I just lose interest. I have no idea. But, but the thing is... Okay, so you lose interest. Uh, you'll, you'll set up a date, and then the morning of the date, you'll lose interest. Okay, let's hear more. Night before, I'm like, I'm like up for it. The next day, I always find the reasons to postpone it. So I wanted to hear if you have something similar, have similar experience with the ladies. Thank you for calling, brother. I'll tell you this. Now, I used to set up a lot of dates in my 20s, and then the night before, I would, you know, jerk off or do masturbations. And when I was doing masturbations, man, I w the date was done. I, I wasn't going on a date the next day because I'm a real... You know, I got that heavy flow. Ant flows in town when I masturbate, you know, so I really spray out. I mean, I lose probably 2% of my body weight. You know, I'm, you know, I'm that real, that frother. You know what I'm saying? I'm that, you know, I'm really espousing some seed when I do it. So I would be exhausted. You know, I'd almost have to be in a damn, you know, get a damn IV or something to recoagulate, you know, get the fluids in me. So I can, I, I can relate to that because I would do that a lot. I would have a date set up the night before I get hopped up on pornography and, and do myself out with, uh, my, you know, them, you know, that hands of, so yeah, I can relate to that, man. But it sounds like, let me see if you're setting up a date with somebody and really what I was doing, I think was, uh, for me, it was just about fear. I was afraid how the date would go, I think. I think I was afraid of, you know, is this girl going to like me? Is this going to go well? What's going to happen? And so I would just get so keyed up, I would jerk off. And then I didn't want to do the date. Um, and it was probably a control issue. I knew that if I jerked off, I would feel good, and I wouldn't leave it up to this girl and whether or not she would accept me or not. You know, that's what I think it was more of for me. I didn't want to go before a girl who I felt, you know, a lot of times what women thought of me determined what I thought of myself. And so I didn't want to go before a woman and have her uh, judge me negatively because I just knew how much that was going to make me feel bad about me. So instead, I would cut all of that off at the past by just, you know, doing that nasty at the house, doing masturbations. And then that way, uh, it would give me an excuse. I'd be like, oh, well, now I'm tired, so I'm going to cancel the date. And it kept the power, you know, the control. It kept it on, you know, I was in control of the situation. So for me, it was a control issue. You know, it was like, well, if I don't go on the date, then I don't have to be subjected to the judgment. And I, and I felt so bad about myself. I was like, there's no way this girl's going to like me. But now another thing, it could be lazy. And then maybe that's just your something you can try to put on yourself. Maybe just try to have a new experience with dating. Because these are the golden years, I feel like, of us enjoying each other as humans. Man, it is so quick that everybody's locked into their iPads and this and that. So it's different, brother. You know, but I think you try your, maybe you just try to have a new experience. You know, I'm going to go on a couple of the dates. Because these are people that agreed to the time. You know, and, it, and sometimes when we make agreements to be somewhere, for somewhere, and do something, and then we don't honor it, 
you know, for whatever reason, we it's just a selfish act, really. It's saying, oh, we don't think enough of them to honor their time, you know, to honor the fact that they might have set aside their evening to spend time with us. And then maybe you don't think of it as a date. Maybe just think, oh, here's a new opportunity to meet somebody new and maybe make a friend or something, you know? And I know friend doesn't sound as cool, but these days, friends is fucking each other. So if you're looking to do sex, you could get that opportunity out like that. Um, but I wish you well with it, man. And I appreciate you calling losing interest the day of. You know, I... It's, to, you know, sometimes you want to find the goal, but when you get the goal, it ain't what you were really looking for. So maybe you're looking for somebody, but, you know, there's something else. Maybe you're not. Maybe try a man's, bro. Set up a date with a man's and see if you show up for that one. Then you might learn a lot about yourself. But good luck to you, brother, man. I love you, all right? Uh, the hotline is 985-664-9503. Let's take another call. Hey, Theo. It's your boy Cameron from Michigan. What's up, Cameron from Michigan? And you guys' basketball team is doing well, the Big Blue. And um, and that's good. And people say Michigan is a good uh, good place at wintertime. You can get do a little bit of hitchhiking up there. I heard it's one of the last decent American hitchhiking hotspots is up there. So let's hear more. I uh, just want to bring something up, man. I've uh, been seeing this girl for quite quite some time now, almost a year, and uh, think she's think she's fucking around on me with her ex boyfriend. She says it's not a thing, but okay, you've been seeing a girl. You think she's messing around on you with her ex boyfriend? Let's hear more. You know, hanging out with him here and there, taking his calls. Shade mine when she's with him, shading his when she's with me. So, just wanted to get your input on the matter, man. Gang, gang, brother. Well, you know, it depends on what their relationship is. I don't think it actually. I don't think it matters what their relationship is. You know, I think it matters what y'all's relationship is. And what's your relationship with her? Is it good? Is it a little suspect? I mean. At a certain point in a relationship, I think it's okay. You can say, "Hey, you talking to that guy don't make me does not make me feel comfortable. Do you still have some feelings for this man?" If they're still hanging out, you know, somebody told me this: straight people don't hang out together unless they're thinking about fucking, bro. And I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just saying it because I heard it. Oh, oh, a man and a woman, they don't usually hang out unless they're thinking about sex. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. Like, I have a friend of mine who does fitness. She's a fitness trainer. And we've never had any inkling like that. And she's a, but, you know, but she is a friend. So I think those lines are becoming a little bit more, you know, blurry these days. But if you're thinking it's, it's happening, then it could be happening, bro. So I would ask her or do a little, you know, put a little bit of flour on the ground and see if she goes over to his place, see if there's footprints in it. You know, that's kind of a tricky thing to do, an old flower trick, the old who you fucking flower trick. But I'd ask her. And are you afraid to ask her, you think? You think she might tell you, well, I do like him? But if you have some instincts, man, your instincts are so powerful. They're really, really, usually our instincts are really well cal calibrated unless there's something wrong with us, which could also be the case. Let's hear another call. Hey there, Theo. Happy holidays to you and yours. My, my name is Mark. Hey, Mark. Happy holidays to you, man. And I say Merry Christmas, but I also say Happy Holidays. Sometimes I say both. Let's hear more. Uh, Southeastern Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, it's the holidays, and some people are putting on a few extra pounds. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people, they might have a mini muffin or something. You know, I know this beautiful girl, she always talking about how she have a couple mini muffins every now and then. I said, well, what is that? Some girl, they get up in the middle of the night, and they have a little bit of mini, you know, they have a couple of little mini muffins. And women like a little snack. You know, I saw this girl, she used to get up in the night and fill her jaw, uh, jaw with a bunch of Skittles. 
and go hard like that on the rest of her sleep, just rainbowing up, just copped up on that fucking glucose. So women are wild. If you leave a snack in the room, sometimes if you go hide a little, uh, you know, some petty fours or some, um, you know, some little uh, sugar snacks or, you know, beef jerkies. If you hide a, some of those in a corner or in a, you know, in a, leave them on a the counter at night like for Santa. But a lot of time, you know, a, a hungry lady will get over there and snack them matches out. So women like a real, they like a secret snack. But yes, people are, are eating more this time of year. Let's hear more. Uh, my, my fiance, she's no different. I don't think it's due to her eating much. I think it's that she doesn't eat the right thing. Okay, so you say your fiance has been putting on weight, and it's not maybe not that she's eating a lot, but that she doesn't eat the right things. Onward. She doesn't. She doesn't exercise at all. Mm. And when we when we met for uh, like six years ago, she was I don't know a buck twenty, but slowly over the years, muffin after muffin, you know, she's put on a few. And I will say that she will not eat vegetables. You know, I swear I couldn't. I couldn't summon. I could summon tears from her. If I made her eat green beans, and that's happened before. Damn, and she's an adult? Because adults, we got to take care of ourselves. So you got to have a green bean every now and then. You can't be having muffins only. Adult don't eat muffins only. Adult are evolved creatures that eat multiple things. But if you're saying that she doesn't want to, and if you try to force her to, yeah, that might not end well. Let's hear more. Uh, is there a nice way that I could motivate her? To either eat better or possibly get some exercise in. Mm. I've tried before and it never ended well for obvious reasons. And uh, uh, any uh, any advice, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Thanks for the call. Man, you know, first it's harder for us to ask somebody to do something if we're not doing it. You could say for health reasons. And a lot of times, I don't know what your age is. If you guys are only 19 years old, then it's going to be hard to be for like for health reasons. But if you're in your 20s or, you know, your 30s, then you could be safe for health reasons. I would like to us to try some new, uh, you know, dieting or fitness techniques. What do you think about that? I think you got to put yourself in the mix, in the equation. Because then it's easier, you know, everything's easier to do if we have somebody to do it with. You know, and a lot of us, it's like we're just hurting and we want somebody to come along and say, hey, I want to help you do this or I want us to do this together and not even tell them that the that the benefit is going to be theirs, really. You know, you could, it, I mean, it's a real selfless thing to do just to say, hey, you know, I want to try this stuff. What do you think about trying it with me? I would love it if you would try it with me. Then you just put it all on you. Like, I want to do these things. What do you think? And, vest and vegetables are getting good. Back in the day, they had like two kind of vegetables and them things was nasty. Brussels sprouts and more Brussels sprouts, I think. But now they got, you know, zucchinis and fucking, you know, cauliflower. Somebody fucking burned a bunch of cauliflower the other day and sold it to me for about $11 and I ate that shit. But they have a lot of different opportunities now in snacks. So I think you could try to have a new experience with some of those. But whatever you do, man, do it lovingly. Because we all have weird bodies. You know, I got hair on my butt and sometimes I walk out of the room backwards. You know, I remember when I was dating a girl in college, I would get scared because my hat, I didn't want nobody seeing, you know, hair on my butt. Because if people see hair around your butt, a lot of time they think, you know, you don't have, you don't come from a good lineage or your family's kind of like prehistoric or, you know, you can't really afford to get like your, you know, your butt kind of permed or straight, you know, gelled down or whatever. So... I would just be scared. So I would, whenever I would be in, if I would be, you know, doing, you know, involved in some sort of sexual or full sexual with a woman, then I would walk out of the room backwards so they couldn't see my butt. 
like I was a straight up Michael Jackson of uh, fornication, you know? And so that was, you know, we all have those things about us, you know, about our bodies we don't like, you know, and especially as men, it's tough because, you know, it's everybody's getting their whole body pruned and people's getting a, you know, their junction pierced and everything and all of this shit. You know, people getting toy trains installed in their ass and all kind of stuff. The, the, things have changed, man. People, you know, some women, they'll get their breasts, you know, removed and then repurposed up around their shoulders. Like, damn, you got some fucking milk dripping out of your damn, you know, up near your clavicle, mama. But people are changing. We got to be aware. But I think whatever you do, man, try to do it lovingly. You know, and also know what you're getting into. You know, I have a friend and he's married and his wife, he's he, at this point in their marriage, he's like, my wife does this and this and this. And I said, well, would, you know, she's probably doing those things when you married her. And she didn't like doing, she didn't like going, if she didn't like fitness and, you know, it may be, then you can consider is this, you know, what I want. But good luck, man. It is a tough one. But whatever you do, do not say something that is going to hurt somebody's feelings because those things are hard to change. Uh, or do your best not to, man. You know, fuck. What do I know, man? Next call coming in here, 985-664-9503. And I appreciate, uh, you know, young men calling in with things that are going on. This episode is about, it, it really is kind of about what's going on with some men. Let's take a call here. Onward. What up, Theo? It's Connor from South Carolina. Connor from South Carolina. And, you know, I went hitchhiking one time. I was in love with a woman, and I hitchhiked up to South Carolina in Charleston. And I showed up in the middle of the night, and I found myself on my, on my ex-girlfriend's porch. I was petting. They had a cat out there. And I pet that little bitch probably for two hours, four hours or something. You know, and I, right till the sun was coming, just starting to come up. And I don't... I don't pet a cat at sunrise. I'm not that kind of guy. You know, I'll do so. I've done some things and, you know, I almost got caught in something once, but thankfully I had to go to the airport and, you know, because this dude had locks on his bathroom and shit was weird. But what I'm saying is this. You ain't going to catch me petting an animal I don't know at sunrise. Because that ain't the kind of shit I'm into. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go to heaven, not other places. So you won't catch me petting a damn animal I don't know very well at sunrise. You catch me doing natural stuff at sunrise, having an orange juice, you know, getting a, um, you know, reading a poem, doing, you know, going back to sleep, doing regular shit. You ain't going to catch my hand on the back of a fucking animal. I don't know very well at sunrise, bruh. And if you see somebody doing that shit, shut them down. Notify the authorities. If you see something, say something. But what else do we got here? Onward from South Carolina. Onward. Uh, I was calling. Been having some marital issues. Went through a lot of like physical abuse, mental abuse when I was a child. And I'm kind of a loner. My wife. Says I don't communicate enough. Just wondering what your thoughts are about it. Let me know. Thanks for calling, man. And I'm sorry that you had that time when you were young. And you know, but I think it's brave of you not to let that time just define you forever. And that's one of the things I'm where I'm at in my life too, man. It's like, am I just gonna always live in these little circles where I keep doing shit because of? you know, things that happen to me, or am I going to cruise up past this? Am I going to draw the line and get to that other side? It's really hard, man, to communicate with people when you, uh, when you probably weren't communicated too well as a youngster or when the communication you needed and the way you needed it didn't come into you that way. Because when you're young and that happens to you, it makes you feel all you think is, or all we think sometimes, or all I thought, was that something was wrong with me. You know, if the world doesn't feel okay, if something's wrong in the world, then it must be my fault. Because as a youngster, we think it, the world revolves around us. 
It has to. It's the way we learn to live in it. But I think, yeah, man, you know, I was struggling with this and and I still do sometimes. And, uh, you know, sometimes it can be just to say I'm scared to talk about how I really feel sometimes because you're probably scared that if you do, even though you might not realize it until you say it, you're probably scared that if you share how you really feel that your spouse may not love you or they're going to think a, way, a certain way, they're going to judge you or make you feel a certain way where then you're going to feel ashamed of sharing. Because sometimes at a, at a place where we don't even remember anymore, we were afraid to share because it wasn't safe. And I know that sounds, bro, honestly low-key like some gay shit, bro, but, but high-key, it doesn't, you know? And if you're sitting there with her, you can say, look, I don't want to share things with you. And she's going to say, why? And there's going to be feelings in her come up, and you're going to, it may be hard to say whatever you're going to say, but you need to say whatever that next thing is. And sometimes that next thing is, well, I'm scared or I'm ashamed or I'm embarrassed or, and it's not even about her. It's just about some other way that you uncomfortably learned or were trained not to communicate in the past. And it's just, it's going to resurface itself until you feel comfortable. But man, sharing those nightmares that are in us and sometimes those fears and and just being, just being brave to say, hey, look, I don't know why, but it makes me, I feel bad that I can't share with you. It, it makes us, it can eventually lead us to some relief. But, but if you're thinking about it, man, that's a cool thing to be thinking about, I think. Um, and it's, I appreciate you calling because that's right in line with some of the stuff I want to try to get through some of this year, you know. But gang, gang, bro, onward. Let's take a call right here that came in. Good luck over there in South Carolina, man. And those gang cocks. And Klimp's, Klimp son playing tomorrow night. And I was in uh, Charleston, South Carolina when 9-11 happened. And I went outside and they was doing construction work outside. And I thought something had happened locally. And then we went and got us a kicking chicken. Onward. Hey, Theo. This is. Luke King calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Luke King from Charlotte. And Charlotte's a very diverse city and a city that's on the uh, on the rise, but it's also kind of a milk toast city in a lot of ways. It's also kind of calm. I'm a unique place. Uh, a lot of banking. And I saw Cameron, um, not Cameron Diaz. Who's the quarterback? Cameron Fowler. Nope. Cameron Newton pushing a baby stroller there one time when I got there, and he was in a Gucci hat. Onward. I've been dating this Russian girl. Oh, now that's the dark arts, bro. For about about a year now. And uh, anyway, a couple of my buddies thought it'd be funny to text her from my phone and say that I wanted her to eat my back door out. And oh, okay. So you talking about get her getting back there and having that little lavender snack, huh? You talking about her getting back there and having a little bit of a, uh, you know, that, you know, sucking on that dirty gogurt more? And I'm not into that kind of stuff, but uh, I had no idea they sent the text. And anyway, I, we'd just gotten out of the shower and I was laying on the bed, stomach down, looking at my cell phone. <laughs> what, bro? I don't believe this shit. You were laying on your bed, stomach down, looking at your cell phone, bruh? Who are you, Eve in the Bible? Dude, nobody does that shit, dude. Bro, you know who does that shit? People that's about to get straight up molested, bruh, or something. Somebody that's about to get bit by a wolf, dude. Where do you live at, Narnia? You're l Let's hear more. And uh, oh, let's hear that again. Anyway, I, we'd just gotten out of the shower and I was laying on the bed, stomach down, looking at my cell phone. And uh, what? little did I know, she came running up behind me and leaped onto the bed and just started going to town. 
what, dude? Where's your girl? Where's your is your girlfriend? Uh, what species is she? That's my question because you know nobody just runs up behind you, leaps onto the bed, and starts snacking on that little, you know, on that little blue jean baby. You feel me? On that uh, brown eyed girl. And if you don't know, brown eyed girl is a song about but you know doing butt activities because hey where did we go days when the rains came down in the hollow playing a new game laughing and a running hey hey brown eyed girl and that's what that's about doing bottom stuff uh onward and uh you know i know north carolina's first in flight and everything but uh i'm just not really sure how to feel about it well, look, dude, look here, first in flight, Lewis and Clark, you know, Orville and, you know, Redenbacher, whoever fucking flew the plane, bro, sound like you, if you're laying on your, on the bed, stomach down on your cell phone, bro, then you need to tighten up, because that ain't normal shit, dude, that's some kind of shit that maybe like, um, you know, Geno Smith would do, or who's like a kind of a tender gentleman. Um, uh, you know, Stephen A. Smith, he sounds, he seemed like he would do that shit, that soft guy from the, um, who else, man? Uh, I don't know, somebody else. But fucking get up and, if you, dude, don't stand around with your ass to people and lay down like you're, like you're in a damn, you know, Little Little Women novel or something. Let's take another call that came in. Onward. Hey, what's going on, Theo? It's Trevor out of uh, southeastern Kentucky. Thank you for calling, Trevor. Onward. I recently got injured at work. I was uh, I'm a lineman for a power company. Oh hell yeah, dude! I got I got electrocuted about 14 months ago, bro. Got fucking shook down. I stepped on some cables by a food truck, and they was doing these lobster rolls. And I found out later they was doing the illegal. They had illegal shellfish going on, but I've been through some shit like that. Let's hear more. I got electrocuted at 7,200 volts. Fuck. Damn, bro. Who's going to win the Super Bowl, dog? You took in that many volts, bro? Wow, you're like a damn washer dryer. That's a lot of volts, man. Dude, you should go do some oral sex or something in the circus, bro. You could probably rearrange somebody's DNA strands with that kind of tongue work. If you got that much volts in you, Jesus, man. You could make a regular car a Tesla, bro. You could get a Jeep Cherokee and just put your hands on the wheel and just fucking... Suddenly, you're getting those, that Tesla kickback from the government, that 6200 or whatever. Wow, you a real electricity daddy, you know? I fucking shake your hand and and uh, you know, and, and just and just finger start a go kart, bro. You got that magical sauce in you. Let's hear more. It's kind of messed my arm up, my my heart up a little bit, man, and they fired me and stuff. So now I got a little girl, a wife I'm trying to take care of. Start to get depressed, man, and have some anxiety and stuff like that. I ain't never had to, I ain't never been dealing with stuff like this before. I was just trying to see, you know, what advice you had about it and what I can do to get back up on the up and up, you know. Gang, gang, man. I appreciate you calling in and, uh, yeah, I can hear in your voice is a little tough. And especially if you got that family. And, you know, I noticed this, man. It's, you know, I was in, you know, I've been in accidents and stuff over the years and different things have happened. And, you know, sometimes shit just happens and he, you can still have a claim and you can still kind of keep, the, you know, you can see if things will hurt down the road. But sometimes you got to let it go. You got shocked up. Maybe some ma some magic could happen to you in the future because of it. You know, it's like, I just mean in the sense, like sometimes if we have like a workman's comp, we do that kind of stuff, you know, or we, we have like a lawsuit or that kind of thing. It's like, you know, those things drag out for a long time and sometimes they're very necessary. But if you think inside of yourself, 
You know, I'm just, I'm worried that, you know, this might be long continuing. But if you can get back out and work, you know, take some appropriate time you need and, and get back out there. You know, just don't let the disability become you. You know, they had dudes, you know, we had a guy when I was young, he didn't even have any legs, right? I mean, he might have had them, but he didn't show them to us. And he could swallow a um, tenedor, silverware. He could swallow a damn silverware, bro. And you'd look at the dude and you'd be like, what the fuck, man? I don't think he could do it. But then he would do it. And it probably wasn't safe for him. I mean, the dude already lost his damn legs. He's out here fucking, you know, chewing on knives and shit and forks. You know, sounds like a, not a good idea. But at some point, he's just got to move on. He could lay up there in the leg shack or whatever forever. You know, saying, hey, you know, I got this and this happened and this happened. But at some point, he said, you know what? I got to get in the chair and just wheel out the door and get back into the working world. And next thing you know, he's out there, you know, swallowing silverware and, you know, three or four piece sets and doing good work. So that what I'm saying is sometimes it's just that thing. If you, if you, you may have, you may have an injury and it may be a real injury, you know, and, and it may take you some time to heal from it, but you also have to decide for yourself, well, it, is it worth it to sit and think about this healing all the time and, and to get caught in that whirlpool of like, you know, maybe having a lawsuit and all of that? Or is it worth it just to kind of get it together and get back out there and work? Because in the end, sometimes the finances are the same. Like you can, you know, you can go to the, all the, you know, a lot of time people get in a car accident, they go to all these things and they do the doctors and next thing you know, you go into magical shit and they got specialty this and that. And it's been six months and you ran up this hospital bill and it gets settled by the insurance you get after everything you make, you know, 20,000. But if you'd have been going to work the whole time, you'd have made 25,000. So uh, it might take extra, you know. I don't know, man. I know that might be some tough love stuff to say, but, you know, it's like, what circle do you want to swim in? Do you want to, if you, if you, if you're able to move and able to work, sometimes just chalk it up and be that fucking magic dude that got, you know, keyed up and lit up by the Lord, by the damn electrical. Because look, man, I've had six friends that have been hit by fucking lightning. And if you don't think for once that I don't think that lightning is looking for me, you're dead wrong, daddy. I know it is. So, and when I meet a new friend now, I, I fucking low key fucking slide him a little note. I don't want him to hear him. I don't want to say it out loud because I don't want the powers that be in the world to hear us, the electrons or whatever. I say, look, daddy, you know, don't look at the sky with your mouth open because that shit really going to hurt. You might get chopped out. Let's take one more call. Here we go uh, on this Man Up episode. Onward. Hey, Theo. Uh, this is Landon. And I am 35 years old, working as a musician on one of these cruise line fucking ships or whatever. Which Oh, I like cruise ships, dude, because I like endless pineapple chunks in the morning. Let's hear more. Which is a good gig. I get paid good and all that stuff. I fuck all that. Anyway, the reason I called is because I actually have been seeing this girl. Uh, she was like a big crush of mine. Um, I met her on the boat, and then she left her boyfriend, and then and then we started hanging out quite a bit. Kind of bloomed into this like friendship thing, which I kind of made a dedication to like just be friends first, you know, before we got too crazy into the sex. I didn't want to be a rebound. I fucking want to be with the one, you know what I mean? Like I want to have that. I don't know, be one. You know? Yeah, man, I feel you. I mean, sex is kind of almost retarded sometimes, dude. And, um, yeah, onward. You know, um, anyway, uh, she's just been distant, you know, been just up and down, man. And I've just been doing my best to give her space. But my big, biggest problem is I'm getting all this fucking anxiety. This is the main reason I call this, because I'm getting all this anxiety about it, you know, thinking about who else she's dating. Meanwhile, I'm fucking going out on dates with other girls. I just don't understand why the fuck I have this this anxiety and all this bullshit around this when 
I want it to work, but part of me thinks that maybe I'm just obsessing too much and maybe I should just, like, end it. I don't know. I've been communicating these things with her to an extent, and she doesn't seem to be freaked by it, which is a good thing. But uh, is there any solutions you all might have? Well, I'll say this, man. It sounds like a control thing to me. You know, you want to be able to do your thing and also know what she's doing at the same time, and that's, like, about control a lot of times anyway. I mean, you met her, she was seeing somebody else, you know, when y'all became friends and she left the guy. So, you know, there's a history there, a little bit of just, you know, her being a little bit of a wandering when it comes to lustfulness. But I think at this right now, it seems like you just have to take care of yourself. You know, it doesn't sound like you're going to, you know, it's not like even you know you can't win her back. And who she's dating and that sort of thing, it's really none of your business. If you're dating, I mean, uh, you know, and if you're being candid with her or you just being candid with her so she'll tell you what she's doing. You know, and I don't know why we want to control others sometimes. And I'm not saying that I haven't done it. Dude, when I was in, you know, when I was younger, I would use all types of controlling type of behaviors. And uh, and I still feel bad about some of them. But you sound like a nice guy, and you sound like you're in a good scenario. And if you're on the boat, dude, you're basically, you're that kind of traveling cock. You're that floating cock, like somebody threw a cock into the jet stream, and that thing is just, you know, bouncing around. Indian Ocean, you know, Gulf of Mexico, Guatemala, Himalayas, you know, North Sea, different areas. You just floating along. You might fuck somebody over here. You know, maybe a nice tidal wave just throws you into a window and they got a little, you know, a nice lady in there looking to meet somebody, a little saltwater cockadilla. So you got this, you know, you're very, um, you have some freedom right now. <clears throat> maybe just try and enjoy your freedom. You know, and sometimes if you're obsessing over something, you can just, you know, ask if you have like a higher power, just ask Ask your higher power to help you out. Just say, look, I don't want to obsess about this anymore. Can you help me? Can you hitchhike my brain right off of this avenue? Or even just pray for your friend. If you want to pray for her, say, hey, I hope she meets somebody great. Because if you're somebody great, then one day it could be you. So you, that way you get like a little backhanded prayer in for yourself. But I got to go to actually, uh, I got to go to a dang meeting. So, um, but I love you guys, man. You know, and Happy New Year, and this is it. We can do it how we want. We can keep some of the past. We can get some, we can, you know, we can cherry pick some of the future. But I believe that our best lives are in front of us. But I also believe that we have to do the work to meet them halfway. I really, really believe that. Um, you guys be good to yourselves. I'll see you in Omaha this weekend. Uh, 985-664-9503 is the hotline as always. Uh, thank you to everybody that communicated and reached out. Uh, thank you to our sponsors for this episode for Sigmatic uh, and Skillshare. And um, as always, you can... Uh, you can check us out on iTunes. Please subscribe if you haven't. Get that hitter. And uh, be good to yourself, man. You guys deserve it. I know you do. It's going to be a crazy year, bro. What could happen? Who knows? I hope that lightning don't get me. Boing. Just sitting on your front porch Wondering how could I be so far from my home And my mind is somewhere else But when I find it I'll patch up where it's been blown Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm floating